Tasmania, the winching state. Oh, I tell you what, I'm having so much fun climbing up this hill. It's nerve wracking, but it's just fun. Like you just feel the power of the truck, just grab traction and move forward. Trust me, boys, trust me, it's through here somewhere. You reckon? Fair yeah, up. I reckon. Trust me, just keep going. Oh, <laughs> it's like virgin bush. Here we go, here we go, look. It's a proper tunnel. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Proper tunnel. Wow. Like you got a better torch? Oh, Whoa, that's a there torch. There you go. <laughs> that lit her up. Look at that. Wow, it goes right up around the corner that's too. next level. I wonder how far it goes. I don't know, but I'm not going in there. Just imagine that, someone actually dug this. Yeah, hammer and chisel, maybe a few more things. Oh, they might have had um, some sort of drill. Oh, that's oh, gold. Right. Let's yeah, go. That is good. Down the path to the next tunnel. What have we got? Where's the next one? Down this way, I think. Yeah. Or else where the track leads. Now that's more like a tunnel. Yeah, this will be the main tunnel, eh? Rob we can get into. That other tunnel is obviously just secondary tunnel, but this, this has to be the one that they drove the train through. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Check it out. You can see where those carved it out, look. Yeah, every tool oh, mark, yeah. hey. Every tool mark. Very impressive. Now, I guess you're wondering why there's a dirty, great big 100 metre long tunnel carved into the side of this mountain. Well, there's a reason for it. By the late 1800s and the early 1900s, there was a silver lead mine producing, you know, a profitable return from the ore here. Now, they spent, they spent a good part of 20 odd years toiling in the hills here to produce lead and silver for the open market. Woohoo! <laughs> She's an old boiler, this thing. Now, have you ever wondered why they needed an old boiler in, you know, to run a mine? Well, it was to superheat the water and create steam. And it was the steam that drove the stamper and the, and, and the mills. That's where all their power come from. So by the end of mid-1900, it was all but done and dusted. They'd realised that the ore was not profitable to get it out of the hill. And down there, it's what's left of a town that used to thrive on a massive silver and lead mine. Right, OJ, you're setting us up some pretty bloody steep track. Where are we heading? We're gonna go and find some old ghost towns. I hope the ghosts had good four drives back in the day. Yeah, they had plenty of horse and carts too. Well, they ghost towns, mate. They couldn't get to the town anymore. They were sick of going up down this hill. Quite possibly. But there's plenty of them here in Tasmania. I'd love to see a horse and cart go up this bloody track. Small cart and a big horse. Oh, Jason's in trouble. Lost any traction on that turn? Yeah, don't go, don't keep going, mate. I just lost traction there for a second. You're gonna have to come back. I'm not gonna go forward, and I don't wanna go backwards. Copy that, come on back. You just tell me when, mate. Get my boots on. Driving without my boots. First hill of this track. Jason's stuck already. How are we looking, boys? Yeah, mate. I was just getting him back in his car. He's looked up at the front. He's looked up at the back. Let's see if we can make his car a little bit longer. Come on, babe. Come on. There we go. You want to stop there and get Kyle out of the way? You'll probably get it going from there. Yeah, it does get steeper there, doesn't it? Yep. I'm out. I'm going up. It's a start. I just lost traction on the corner there. Come around the corner and um, once the inside wheel lifted, I just lost all yeah, traction. Yeah, yeah. Come on, baby, come on. That's it. Yeah, 
Okay, let's see if we can get up here. Let's get a little bit of a run up. Put it forward. <laughs> Momentum is my friend! <laughs> Who do you got? We're starting to break out into the high country now. I think we've got to get to the top of that peak in front of us. Well, beautiful day for it, at least it's not all cloudy. Yeah, we should be able to see for miles around. This would be one of the nicest days we've had so far, I reckon. Cracker. Yeah, it'd be uh, it's definitely a cracking day today. Temperature's still low, but I think it'll get colder as we get higher and higher in the altitude. I get the jeans this morning, mate. I'm running the jeans. You've changed, you know, you're getting soft. I am so, 100% getting soft. Looks like one little creek crossing or something coming up, Jase. Yeah, copy that. It's a creek running down the track. Mmm, it's only just a little baby creek, but it's a nice steep incline on the way after with wet tyres, so uh, you probably want to carry some momentum. I'll oh, see so how you go, mate. It's got a little bit of that on it. Let's go. Oh, it's got a little bit of traction there, Carl. Yeah, I've got a bit. I don't know how you're going to go. I just weigh up the top here in this next little flat because then it goes up again, but I'll wait here in case you need a winch. Yeah, copy that. I'm going to go to the left. Definitely left. Yeah, I reckon you're going to get that, mate. I reckon we'll be with you up there. Go across and get out and start walking up the hill. I don't reckon he's gonna break it up there. That's my call. You've been wrong before. So far, so good. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. No worries, mate. We I don't even think you're gonna get that. Neither did I. Oh, it's not over yet. Oh. Don't speak too soon. I lost traction at the top. I lifted a wheel. Oh no. In this last little bit here, your trailer's just on a little shock and his back right's in a little hole. Oh, yeah, I lifted that front left. And yeah, you were so close. I know. It was good effort though. I didn't think you were going to get that far. Just whack her on the back, mate. Whack on the back. Yeah. It won't take much. I reckon you'll make that, Simo. A little hole right there. If I drop the van tire into that at speed. Oof. Come on, baby. That's it. Doesn't need much, eh? Hey? Nah. My turn. I reckon you'll make that, Simo. Get up this last leg. Poor Jason and I got to do the old leapfrog thing so Simo can get up with enough room. And he's dropped a couple of rocks in that hole, so as if we can get a bit of momentum out of this sucker. I hope the left. Some rocks. Did ya? Yeah, it gave me a bit of momentum at the bottom. Down the bottom? Yeah, the one down. Ah, the yeah, okay. I only crawled up that one. I just. I feel that so the van didn't do that. That's the one. Oh, that's oh. not bloody flat either, is it? Come on, grab some traction. 
That's it. That's it, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Hey, <laughs> dumb, lady, dumb. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by the Premium Adventure Recovery System from Campos 4x4. Now, this is an awesome little kit. Now, I put this kit together so that you've got all the little things that you need when you're out on an adventure and you get yourself bogged and you're looking for recovery. So, if you get a chance, check it out. Campos 4x4 shop online or get down to your local Campos dealer and they'll have plenty of these in stock. Otherwise, mate, Stop listening to me, Babylon, and get on with your adventure. Well, I'm wind well up there at that rut you're at. On the inside closest to you or on the other side? I went this side. Uh, I would actually probably tell you to straddle it. Yeah. You didn't straddle it. You do exactly the opposite. The traction control is actually still working a little bit. I could feel it there. When a wheel came off the ground, I could feel it like doing the traction controlling thing. Yeah, that's what it's for. That's what it's for, mate. D Max got a pretty uh, smart uh, traction control set up, eh? Then yeah, I could feel it up there. Weird, now you're like grabbing, grabbing the stop the wheel from spinning so much. Yeah, yeah, I could feel it 100%. I know we're doing a lot of going up and up and up and up. Uh, we must be getting to the top shortly. One would assume so, but it, it, I can still see higher peaks. Looks like we're straight into another steep sort of climb, Jase. He's got a sharp turn by the looks of it. Looks a little bit rutted out. It's not overly tight. You know, you'll have to go wider on that trailer, but it's just, yeah, you can't carry any speed through it. Okay. Get some traction, no traction. Going to the hole. Just wait in this corner for you, mate. Chance for me to stop. Tell me if you uh, need me to keep going. Oh, I can't believe that. Guess we're going up there, boys. I only just got that. I grabbed a little bit of traction by ripping the top surface off. Yeah, you're going up. You come. Start coming up. It just keeps going up here, but there's a bit of traction scratching around. Going up. Yeah, come on up, Simo. Yeah. Get the gun up, get the gun up, get the gun up. Oh, it's a big hole too. Pick a line, pick a line. Well, a little climb, this one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I'm going up. Come on, my dude. Right up that hill. Right up. No, don't stop there! Don't stop there! No, that's me, I'm done. No, I would have made that. Right, I'll come back down and grab your winch. Tasmania, the winching state. Four wraps left. Right, you're on. There's the jeans, mate. Warm? The jeans are good, but the top half needs another jumper. <laughs> Getting a bit chilly, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh. I actually call that a winch pine. <laughs> you gotta love the auto, eh? Come on. Imagine trying to do this with a manual. Ah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Here she oh, goes, and we'll get oh. ready to run. Oh. Oh. Come on. No! Here we go again. Come on, come on, come on. No! Nope. Ain't gonna happen. Yeah, that'll do ya. Alright, winching. 
moving now. Come on. Come up. Thanks, mate. No worries, bud. I'll uh, we'll move a little bit further forward so you can flatten out and we'll go and get Simo. Challenges on, Simo, from a standstill straight up here, eh? Okay, where's where's my line? I'm gonna go a different line. I'm gonna stay hard left. See if I can get some traction first. It's clutching. Yeah, stop there, mate. Stop there. Yeah, it's as we go without breaking something. If you want, just repo the hook. Easy little sucker, isn't it? Thanks, mate. No worries. Yeah, a little bit further forward, so when I get up, I'm actually up. Mate, I've, I've got to go up another rise now. You're up, mate. You're up. Oh, man. Oh, man. Even though I'm just sitting here doing nothing, so I'm like... All right, you boys got the first section. We got more to go yet. I'm just going to hold in this position to see you get past that bit, Kyle. Yeah, good call, mate. Good call. I'll wait till you get out of the way, mate. I'm sitting on this little flat spot. I'm good for a minute. Copy that. Mate, this track has one direction and that's straight up. Yeah, I probably wouldn't go past that point there. I reckon I'm going to struggle on that bit. Yeah, I'll just drop me a little hole up here I'm just going to drop into. Come on, mate. Come on. I'm going. <laughs> Thank you again, my friend. Thank you, good sir. Right, so you don't, don't you stress yourself, all right? I've had enough of winching today. I've yeah, had enough. It's I'm a bit done. like that. It's getting yeah. cold. I've had enough. Oh, I tell you what, I'm having so much fun climbing up this hill. It's nerve-wracking, but it's just fun. Like you just feel the power of the truck. Just grab traction and move forward. Double it up. That's it. She's coming up. Come on, baby. Come on. It's getting there. Come on, Maxi 2. Find a bit of traction, damn you. Oh, there's some. There's some traction. Coming in hot. Yeah. G'day, guys. This video is brought to you today by the Boss Shadow 270XL from Camp Boss 4x4.
Today I want to show you the new awning from Camboss 4x4. Now this is a 270, so it wraps around 270 degrees and it's a freestanding full A-frame awning. What I'll do is I'll set the thing up and I'll show you how easy it is to set up by yourself. We'll do the back section first. Now I've already got the little hooky things here. Now these have a little ratchet on the end of them. So I just clip that onto the end here, like that. And pretty much you just pull that ratchet, nice and tight. You set the front bit up, same setup, just hook that on the end there, pull your ratchet, like that, pull it nice and tight, like that, okay. It's got three LED lights, one in each of the arms. It's got a zipper in the back here, so that zipper is to allow you access to a rooftop tent. And that's pretty much it. Anyway, that's enough from me. Keep checking out the video. There we go, I'll make this bit. T-Max is easing this track. With a caravan on the back with only. That is testing the capabilities of the D-Max like there's no tomorrow and it is loving it. <laughs> wow, now that's a view. Oh yeah, we've got a view. There's a dozen pretty cracker peaks over there. We have never done anything like this before. No, nah, hell no. Not even remotely like this. <laughs> pull our tractor up north, mate, they're all, you know, either mud bug holes, bog holes or sand or Bush, this is next level. Oh, baby, last little bit, I reckon. I can see a peak. Oh. oh, yeah. Hell yeah, I can't believe we just climbed a bloody mountain. That's next level. Look at the view. Technically, we didn't climb it, the cars did. <laughs> I don't care, we got up here. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Yeah, baby! Top of the world, Woo! top of the world. Take that that view. is awesome. Full top. That's a cracker. Woo! I reckon the planes are lower than us. <laughs> Cooking. Climbing mountains tends to make you a bit hungry. So what about we knock up a feed? It's a little bit cold, the temperature's gonna drop drastically tonight. So I'm thinking we're gonna need some comfort food, you know, around camp. Something wholesome, something to warm your belly. And of course in Tasmania, they like sheep and they like, uh, what else they like? They like apples and all that sort of stuff, but I don't have any apples, but I do have some lamb. So I'll grab a bit of lamb out of the uh, fridge here. Here we go, a bit of lamb. There we go, a bit of lamb. Now, I'm gonna use the camp oven, which I've got sitting here on the little uh, the gas cooker. And I've had it heating up there for a bit because I'm gonna braise them. Alrighty, let's get cracking. So I'm gonna need to chop up some veggies really quickly. Now, I'm just gonna dice the onions up, but what I might do first, while I'm dicing that up, I'll get the lamb chop sitting in there and I'll braise them up. Woo, that's hot. So you wanna braise them in there quickly. A little bit of garlic paste that I've got here. I'm just gonna stick that in there. That's a fair bit of garlic, but I do, I do like the old garlic. A rough chop some onion, like that. Chuck that in. Salt and pepper. Oh, you can smell that sucker straight away. Quick braise. You see the onions there, they're just breaking up nice and solid. Now I'm gonna chop up the uh, sweet potato. Some nice, awesome chunks of sweet potato. Straight in there as well. That's all fine now. I've, I've braised one side, the other side's down. And then now, we'll just keep the heat into it, fill it up with the rest of our ingredients. Potatoes. All right, braising is done. Doing a bit of mix up there. Try and keep everything in the pot. All right, so. I got some stock here now, this is beef stock. Yeah, about that much will do, I reckon, for now. I'm gonna chuck in a bit of soya sauce. So I'll whack a bit of wine in. A good helping of wine, don't be too worried about that, be pretty casual with the wine. 
Now I'm going to stick some coconut milk in here as well. And you're thinking, what? Coconut milk? Hell yeah. So we're going to chuck in that. Let's get a little bit of a mix up going on in here. And oh, wow. Look at these flavors. All right. So last thing is I need to thicken up. I need to thicken that, that sauce. You want it nice and thick. So I'm going to stick a little bit of flour in a bowl. So I'll get a bit of water here. I'm just making a paste. And you'll see that. See that paste? So I'm going to dribble a little bit of that in there. Really get this mixed in. Okay, so a big mix up. That is now ready for the lid. And we're going to stick that on the coals over there. So hopefully there's some nice coals going on. Definitely bring that over, mate. Definitely yes. bring that little sucker over. I mean, do you want to hold that for you, mate? Here we go. Just look at you go with the shovel, mate. Woohoo! All right. I'll sit that sucker there for a little bit, and in the meantime. I reckon you boys might like a bit of uh, Shiraz. Just a nip for him, yep, that's it. Well planned. Like he knows what he's doing. Very good, mate. Mm -hmm. Cheers, look. You guys, want, you aren't wanting it, that's horrible. <laughs> Cooking. Gonna make us so just a little bit more, out. boys. We're gonna put some rice in now. Thicken her up. She's good to go. Look, it's starting to fall off the yeah, bone. That smells good. That'll be dinner, mate. Good to go. A bit of this in, and I'll just soak up all the goodness. There we go. So there's a bit of rice chucked in there. We'll give that another five minutes to um, soften the rice up, and we're good to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that, boys. Good. That's spot on. That's what you call comfort food here in the. Tassie Highlands. In the far south, about as south as you can get. Woo! There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Simon, how good does that look? Oh, look at yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mate. Well, there you go, guys. That is a beautiful red wine juice. Lamb chops with rice. Let's put on the money. Cooking. Can't be too far away, mate. We're gonna find something here, boys. What do you got, mate? What do you got? Look, big, old, and abandoned. Come on, here. Let's have a look, eh? Hey? Got a bit of a rent, mate. Bit of rendering. Brand new. Definitely looks deserted. What do you reckon? reckon is it? Look at huh. that. There it is. It's the Royal Hotel. That's the one we're looking for. 1910. 1910. This one's got a real history. Big history? Oh, big story with this joint. Hey, nice. Let's have a look. How cool is it? Hey, it's all time. <laughs> it's bloody awesome. Although someone stole all the timber. Oh, they did not. No <laughs> floors. <laughs> I was looking for a warm fire and a bar after all that. Well, there's the fireplace. Let's go and have a look. This might Here be the, uh, what, they call, what do you call the one with the fireplace? The, the lounge? Yeah, the, the lounge. The lounge? The lounge. They definitely propped it up off the floor a bit. This would they? have been a nice timber floor, mate. Oh, it would have been nuts. There's not much warmth coming out of the fireplace. Absolutely zero warmth <laughs> coming out of the fireplace, buddy. Flute still there? I like it, though. Proper. Can you imagine the stories that this place could tell? Oh, mate, yeah, be unreal. Well, the actual stories, because this, apparently up behind us there in the hills, that was like this thriving town. There would have been a thousand miners. Can you imagine the noise coming out of this on a Saturday yeah, night? Yeah, go. going off, mate. What's next? Well, the biggest thing, the one thing that you're going to find in a ghost town that is really going to reveal the town's checkered past. We'll call it the checkered past. Right, and reveal where the ghosts live is going to be the cemetery. Always the cemetery. 100%. Is there one in? How many cemeteries have we been to in All for Adventure, mate? The, all those, the inscriptions give you a bit of an insight, a bit of a story. Oh, 100%. Is there right. definitely one in, in town? There is one here. Fair Ingham. The other thing, too, is why I say it's a chequered past, is because there was a mine disaster here, right? Way back when the mine was, was operating, there was a, one of Australia's worst mine disasters. What year was that in? I've never heard of it. Oh yeah. Let's go and check her out. Right. Let's go and find this graveyard. Yeah. This 
does look like an old graveyard too, Proper. doesn't it? Proper. Hell yeah. Very old. Tell you what, I'm looking at this ground. Imagine the poor buggers had to dig the graves. They wouldn't have had excavators back then. <laughs> uh -huh. Doesn't look real shovel friendly, eh? It would have been shovel and pick. Pick and shovel, that's it. Mind you, they were miners, mate. Oh, yeah, they were digging holes for a living. That's it. Look at this one here, all burnt. So 1919, it says on the yeah. on the front here. Watch where you walk around here, mate. There's, there's They're old probably graves walking there. over. Graves. You can see the old rocks around it, mate. 100% yeah, are. I feel bad about that. What do we got here? Let's have a look here. Oh, careful, it's on the lean. Don't touch it. 1908. Have a look at this one, guys. Got another one. Yeah, it's an old one, this one as well. So this one is 1908. Yeah. Now, this is actually a young man by the looks of it, because his name was William. We'll call, I'd say he's a young man. He's only 10. He's only a boy. No, no, 19. 19. See, the look looks like a nine. Reckon? Yeah, yeah, see it? There's a nine there. Oh, yeah. yeah, a little hooky thing. Looks like 19. Hosking. So 19 years old. Nicholas Hosking. Now remember this, remember I told you down at the, the pub, <laughs> what was left of it, <laughs> about the big mining disaster? What happened was 46 men died. They've obviously gone underground a big tunnel. It's an underground yeah, mine. Yeah, 46 tunnel. men died and over a hundred trapped. Yeah? Yep. Over a hundred trapped. And it was one of Australia's biggest mining disasters. There's a big cave in on the explosion. Yeah, there's there's not a lot of detail on it, but 46 men died like that and a hundred trapped. They got the hundred out? They did. They were able to get, they were able to unblock the mine. So yeah, you can imagine 2,000 men at the height of when this mine was operating. And then of course, same old story. Same old story, the mine disaster. Um, you know, the company would have been sitting there going, you know, oh mate, this is not, this is not working. Yep. The numbers aren't adding up, the ore's too expensive to, to transport over these bloody mountains and so on and so on, and the processing plant, and yeah. In the end, they just wrapped it all up. Goes down. In 2013, there were six people left. There you go. Mate, that's a window into the past. Yeah. Re full on. It's all right, that's all right. I don't know about you, I just like that sort of stuff. Eh? Yeah. I think it's pretty cool to look back into the past and see how our forefathers did it. Really. It brings you crashing back down to earth a bit, don't you? You know, we get along, we get this technology, we're coming up in chop land cruisers and this and that, and then you sort of sit here and you go, wow, we, yeah. got, we got it easy now, don't we? Oh, you, the clothes they were wearing, they ain't got no fancy, you know, yeah. they might have had a bit of this stuff, but they don't have no fancy Gore-Tex jacket and. Yeah. And those people were, were buried in July, mate. That's the dead of winter. Mm. Dead of winter. And we're feeling it now. Can't imagine, like, all the people in their old clothes and all their hats and, and the service and, and the, the parishioner or whatever, and just in this place right here, would have all been gathered round and it just would have been full on. Raw full on. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. On wooden upward. Yeah. Now apparently just down this road is a spectacular waterfall coming down the side Ooh. of a mountain. Yeah? You yeah. haven't done any waterfall. I'm yet. always keen for a waterfall. Let's go and find a waterfall. G'day guys, this video is brought to you by Campos 4x4's Boss Air tire deflators, mate. This is Australia's number one tire deflator, without a doubt. It's so easy. I can't believe how easy it is. You grab them out. You make the setting on here to which whatever pressure you want to drop your tyre to. Lock her in, whack her on here. Like that, and away it goes. Deflates all four tyres at once. I reckon by the time you get back around to the front, she'll be almost ready to go, and you're off on the tracks. Anyway, if you want to check them out, so you go over to Campos 4x4's web store. They're available on there. Otherwise, have a look at the list. There could be a dealer around the corner from you guys. Anyway, that's enough mucking around. Let's get back to the video and back to the adventure. This is wicked. This is a cool walk, eh? This is all gone. Long way up. This keeps going. There's the top. That's it. What was it, horsetail falls? 
That's pretty nice. Look at oh, that. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. They reckon it's pretty rare for us to be sitting here looking at it, flowing. Yeah? Yeah. This time of the year is only when it really flows. In the summer months, it disappears. There's no water. Yep. So to see it flowing, we are privileged. Yeah. Now with the timing. I knew Tassie was mountainous, but seriously, I didn't know it was quite this mountainous. It's pretty full on, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they're not little mountains. They're like proper. Yeah, proper. But we've uh, we've come to an end. This is the uh, the finish of our Tasmanian trip. Now, I remember this entire series started way back in Cape York. Right up in the warm country, yeah, mate. Yeah, so I, I, I feel the warmth up there, not down here. Do you remember our very first mission? Very first mission with the plane engine. Yeah, big plane engine, that's right. Thunderbolt. Yep, yeah, Thunderbolt, plane engine. Took it back to its final resting place after 70 years. And we rescued a few tourists on the way. That was pretty cool. That was very cool, yeah. A couple of rescues on the way. I think there was a thing. I'm, oh, don't quote me. I think it was a thing in the paper. Heroes of the North. Oh, heroes. Stop really? It. Stop it. But for me, Cape York, seeing Cape York flooded like that, because I've never seen Cape York flooded like that, that was awesome. Yeah, first big time big on the first for you. What, yeah. about, what about your first, mate? You've forgotten it. No, no, no. First on the cake was my first barra. <laughs> you lifted Yeah! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! But we are the right out the front of camp. Legend. That's your first barra. Good yes. job. First of the first. I was stoked. The barra. First barra. We got some good barra. Look at that, mate. How cool is that? Now, I know you caught the barra, right? There's no doubt about that. We got swampy out into out into the uh, its natural environment you gotta love swampy day oh mate it's easy to be uh, we well, should be all driving around in swampies out here it's easy to be confident with 46 inch tires and yeah. zero psi yeah no wait it saved the day saved yeah. the day but how's the telegraph track well obviously it was the first one tele track for me and apparently we went in the wrong way you had a little bit of fun in the tele track didn't you mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He did leave his window down too. He did. Oh, no. Get me out of here, boys. Get me out of here. That's not what I wanted to happen. There we go. Wet car again. It was probably a metre deeper than it should normally yeah. be. Yeah. Is the 200 dry now? Mine is. Mine's dry. <laughs> Mine ain't. Cole's, Cole's D-Max is a different story. You guys have had a bit of trouble with the car in the water, haven't you? What the, what, what the hell happened? We got dramas, get me out, get me out. Yeah, you're in trouble. My car is so dead, I got no power, no nothing, get me out. He's got a gut full of water. Yeah. Snorkel, I bet ya. I'm filling with water, boys. It's not a submarine, it's just a four-wheel drive. Hey, we do it. We, we got it going it again, though. Fixed it up. Yep. It's still going strong. That is yeah, true. Don't skip the beats inside. Uh-uh. That's all four glow plugs out, so that gives us access to the cylinders. So if there's anything in the tops of the cylinders, water, which doesn't make engines go very well, it can shoot that water out, and once that water is out, cross fingers, we can get glow plugs back in, and this thing will fire up. Good to go. Oh, out she comes. Keep it going. There it is. Not a lot of water, not like Heath, but yeah, water come out, which is good. That's what we want. Kyle? Yep. Go. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh. We got lucky there. Yeah, very lucky. Very lucky. Because we, I did not know how the hell that thing was ever going to get out of there without an engine. I've been good. Mine hasn't got any water in it. You haven't missed a beat, have you? No, I've been good. It's, un it's unusual, really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 
And then of course, we got the weather break. The break in the weather, it was perfect. You couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better three days. Oh, I don't think Cole believes us that you, you no. don't get weather that time of year like that out from Cook. I just thought it's always like that on the east coast, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Any will, you'll think <laughs> the barra are thick, yep. and you'll think the weather is perfect. Yep. Set a standard up here for me, lads. Oh, mate, we were at Cape York at the tip, and it was a glass out yeah. for a week. Does that not happen? No. <laughs> <laughs> but how many times have we like, been up and down the coastline? We didn't know about that plane wreck. And then, Simon, was complaining. It has been bloody awesome, but I don't know about you guys, I'm a little bit over the heat. Oh, I think I'm getting old and soft. My aircon, mate, my aircon has been flat out this whole trip. <laughs> you guys have been barking about the heat all trip. I know. Oh, I'll tell you what, I reckon I could fix that. Is that cold enough for you? Holy crap! It's <laughs> really, really cold enough. Mate, I think we're going to have to go to the shops and get some warm clothes. <laughs> You'll never whinge again. I'll never whinge about the heat ever again. Hell no. Now what are we here, Kyle? Yeah, it's too cold. It's too cold. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Look, it's too cold. So we landed ourselves in Tasmania and we hit the wild west coast. Check that out. It's big, isn't it? Mate, I'll tell you what, it's been a little bit of a mission so far just to get to this point, and we still got to travel a fair way yet to the Cape. And how's the beaches on the west coast? Surgy little creeks and the yeah. surge, man. Wow. So, like, you don't know, you're like, oh, I don't want to go anywhere near that salt water, that big surgy ocean, so you try and go up the creek a bit. What do you, what do you find? Quicksand! Oh, what was that? It's nuts. Oh, and you know the worst part about it? Is the water is black. Yeah, you can't see how deep it is. Unless you want to get in it at uh, five degrees. Hey, this, I remember there's only one person on this trip who's been up to here in the water down here. I am saving you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I do appreciate it. Thanks, mate. <laughs> so all in all, I would have to say that going from the tip of Cape York to the bottom of Tasmania is an absolute blast this season. Good fun. Awesome. 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 Stoke goes along for this one. Over the last five seasons, we've given away over $2 million worth of Dream Prize rigs. And now, this could be your chance to live the All for Adventure dream. This year, we've assembled another awesome prize package, valued at over $245,000. There's a brand new Isuzu D-Max, which has been fully kitted out with all the gear you need to confidently head off the beaten track and make it back again. On the hitch, there's a Jayco Crosstrack for a bit of luxury. And there's a U-Force 1000 from CF Moto for a bit of fun. There's a boat and outboard package, some fishing gear, not to mention $5,000 from BCF so that you've got all the gear for your trip away. One lucky person can win all this, and it could be you. Collect your bonus keywords to increase your chances. And if you're an Unleashed subscriber, you can double your chances to win. Register now and you too could be living the All for Adventure dream. Well, there you go, guys. There's no point hanging around here because it's bloody cold. So we're going to find our way back to the mainland, but we're going to see you guys next time. So we're off the beaten track. Introducing the new and improved home of Australian adventure. Unleashed TV, a growing library of content featuring the best of yeah. all your driving, Woo. fishing, Woo. touring, wood builds, bush cooking and whatever you call this. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show All For Adventure, Unleashed and more original series from Jason and the team. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. You can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Now, with no lock-in contract. That's why Unleashed TV is the home of Australian adventure. <laughs>